This video is an introduction to the concept of the Heisenberg uncertainty principle in qualitative terms and what that means for the measurement of momentum and position of a particle. So let's say we have some electron here and we want to know where this electron is or we want to measure something about it. So the uncertainty for where this electron is is related to the photon that we're using to try to measure where it is. So this photon has some kind of wavelength here and kind of qualitatively the uncertainty or where this electron is is sort of related to what the wavelength of this photon is. So if the wavelength of this photon is really big, the electron's uncertainty in its position is, is much bigger. And if the wavelength is smaller, then we know much more where it is in terms of its position. So whenever we measure uh, this electron with a certain particle of light, you can imagine that this light has energy and this that gives energy to this electron and now this electron is has some different momentum it's moving in some different direction and we have some uncertainty about where it's where it's moving now where its momentum is where it's going to be in the future so these are the the two opposite cases now if i make my wavelength smaller now i know where my particle is more precisely i have a smaller region of where it's uncertain where it could be but a higher wave a smaller wavelength uh, particle of light is a higher frequency particle of light it's a light that has more energy and more momentum so whenever it interacts with this electron the uncertainty and the momentum we have introduced is now bigger because the momentum of that light particle was higher okay so notice that these two are inversely related to one another when my uncertainty in position goes down, my uncertainty in momentum goes up. When my uncertainty in momentum goes down, my uncertainty in position goes up. So there's an inverse relationship between the two of those. So notice that we have that in the de Broglie formula as well. So the de Broglie formula there, momentum is equal to Planck's constant divided by wavelength. So as the wavelength going down, the momentum is going up. And as I said there, the inverse relationship between uncertainty in position and uncertainty in momentum. So notice that the uncertainty in position is related to lambda, uncertainty in momentum is related to P. So lambda, so delta lambda times delta P is some relationship to Planck's constant, some relationship to H. And it was Heisenberg in the 1920s who actually discovered that the quantitative nature of this uncertainty is actually that for any given particle, the uncertainty in position times the uncertainty in momentum is greater than or equal to h bar over 2, or Planck's constant over 2 times 2 pi, Planck's constant over 4 pi. So what does this mean in terms of the consequences of measurement? If you have a macroscopic or a large object, it's not important because relative to Planck's constant, the momentum and position we want to measure is very, very big. So we don't care about Planck's constant at large scales because our positions and momentums are much, much bigger than Planck's constant. But if you're microscopic, it matters because you're getting down to a scale where delta x times delta p is going to be comparable to h bar over 2. So for the Bohr model in particular, we can both know the exact position of our electron, delta x, it, and its exact momentum from our velocity vector at the same time. So we both know them infinitely certain, with infinite certainty at the same time. And according to the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, this is bad. So the Bohr model for the hydrogen atom, despite all the predictive power that we saw in the previous videos, despite the fact that it computes the Rydberg constant extremely accurately, that it very accurately computes uh, the average distance and the average energy levels of the hydrogen atom, the Bohr model is in fact flawed. And what we need is a more general theory in order to derive the properties of these quantum particles, these microscopic small things. So the next chapter is going to start with the classical wave equation which is going to allow us to start developing a more general theory for what these waves are that describe these very small particles and how we can get these for a general case and a general, uh, a general equation which we'll be able to use, which will end up being what we call the Schrodinger equation.